Namaste. Ah, blessed solitude. Here I am in my house, in my soundproof studio, at the end of a very small, narrow lane, <laughs> in an obscure village, in an obscure nation, and I'm having a blast. I'm having such a good time. Sometimes I can't believe it. Sometimes I feel a little bit of, uh, I guess it's something similar to survivor guilt, you know? Like, I escaped the rat race. I did it. You know, my rebellion, my one-man revolution against the system, or whatever you want to call it, actually it turned out to be a philosophical quest for a more superior system. I mean, that's the only positive direction it could take. But for most, you know, rebels and hippies and revolutionaries and whatever, um, they go over to the negative. They go over to the dark side. And they start to emphasize the destruction of something or other. Well, we don't do that. We don't do that at all. Huh? In fact, without the inequities and injustices and just plain mean and nastiness of the way the world is, huh? the competitive nature and everything, you know, who would seek out higher knowledge? If everyone was satisfied, see, what would they do? This is why goddess, nature, Saguna Brahman, makes a world that is always imperfect, never complete, never quite good enough, never satisfying. We always want more of this or more of those or, you know, better quality or bigger or something. Huh? We can never just let it rest. We can never just be satisfied. Why is that? Because of desire. See, we ourselves are our own punishment in the sense that we concoct all these desires, imagining them by imitation of advertisements and dramas and stuff like this, or, or whatever, you know, uh, some memory, some vasana, some inborn tendency towards this kind of thing or that kind of thing attracts us and we become obsessed with it and then we begin to label our identity as that thing, you know? I'm an American, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a Hindu, or whatever. It's all just a temporary label name and form, boss. So to base your identity on something, you know, like sexuality or gender or uh, politics or money or beauty, fame, power, knowledge even, even renunciation, this is very dangerous because all these things are temporary. They will all pass. Life itself is temporary. Do we need to be reminded? Yes, we do. We've just been going over the second Adhikarana of Brahma Sutra, fourth chapter, first pada, about that sadhana has to be repeated, has to be repetitious for most people. 
Yeah, there's a few rare ones, you know, a handful in history, maybe even, who, upon hearing the truth one time, instantly got it, realized it right on the spot. But those people, even among enlightened people, those are one in a thousand, one in a million. And how many enlightened people are there? Well, there's probably more than we think. A lot of people in India, you see them in the holy places on pilgrimage and like that. Probably here, too, in Sri Lanka. I just haven't found the good spots yet. But uh, a lot of these people are actually enlightened and don't even know it. They know that one day they had this experience or this realization or this dream or whatever they want to call it, you know, and something opened up and nothing has been the same since. But they don't know what to call it or maybe they apply the name of whatever religious or spiritual culture or tradition they were brought up in um, or maybe they make up a new name, they make up their own name, or maybe they simply don't talk about it because nobody understands. <laughs> if you haven't had the experience, if you haven't done the practices especially that lead to the experience, uh, there's no free lunch. You have to do the work, but it is essential not to view the work as the cause of the realization. Essential. That is because as soon as we label ourselves the doer, I did this sadhana, I chanted these mantras, I did this ceremony, blah, 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 blah. Huh? Then we become entangled in karma. The very act, very thought that I am the doer in any situation of any level or whatever means that we're in duality. Subject, object, and action. Subject, verb, predicate. See, this is duality, or more factually trinity, but it's called duality. <laughs> Because there's a this and a that. There's an I and there's an other. There's a subject and an object. There's a doer and there's a thing done to the thing that it's done to. <laughs> this is why language, you see, <laughs> language cannot possibly express the non-dual state. Because language itself is built on predication and you cannot predicate consciousness. Period. Because it's transcendental, because it's non-material, because it's without name and form. So how can we talk about it, really? Uh, we can just sort of talk about it indirectly. Oh, it's over there somewhere. <laughs> but actually, it's here. It's right here. It's us, you see. And this is what I've been waiting for um, for somebody who sees today's video to comment, what is the misunderstood term? <laughs> because the title of the video is the misunderstood term. What is the misunderstood term? Tattvamasi. All three. Tat, twam. And asi, tat means that, brahman. Tvam means you, brahman. <laughs> and asi means are the same. So very briefly, but the whole adhikarana, the whole second adhikarana, the first part of the fourth chapter of Brahma Sutra, <laughs> is about this. The equivalence of these two, and the next Adhikarana is going to really drive that home, that the so-called individual soul and Brahman 
are identical. Huh? Three equal signs. <laughs> no difference at all. Only the individual is covered by upadis. The body, the mind, memory, ideas, karma, everything. So all of us have access to that center in which there is no duality because we are that. Huh? The only thing is we can't think of it as an object. We have to think of it as the subject, myself, I, Aham Brahmasmi. I am that Brahman. What else could I be? How else could I be conscious? How else could I be alive? We see life comes from life and consciousness comes from consciousness. It doesn't work any other way. You know, you can mess around with your computers as much as you want, but they can only simulate consciousness and intelligence and stuff like that. So, <laughs> yeah. If you want to live in a simulation, that's fine, you know. Tell yourself a story of whatever. Your country, your politics, your physics, your math, your artificial intelligence, whatever, right? But it is all well proven and discussed in the Upanishads that these theories are all false. Why? Because they're based on a product. Atoms, quarks, leptons, whatever, are products. They're created somehow or other. Uh, we may know, we may not know. Still doesn't change anything. They're products. The Big Bang itself would be a product of something. So, you know, let's stop pretending. The only thing that meets the criteria of the absolute is consciousness. And we all have it. Ultimately, we all are it. So don't accept these materialistic theories that actually you just need to hear about enlightenment one time. Huh? That's a good one. And there's several others that have been shot down in the course of this Adhikarna. <laughs> but that's just the drama. You know, that's just the interesting story, uh, the, the rope that Shankaracharya hangs his laundry on. <laughs> oh, and what nice clothes he has. Huh? Such nice devotional praises of Brahman and a recognition of the ultimate authority of God. And I mean, so many things, you know, that he gets right, absolutely right, together. And that's what makes him special. He denies nothing except, you know, a wrong understanding of Brahman. <laughs> Other than that... <laughs> Any philosophy, any practice, the intention of which is to realize God, whatever that means, somehow or other, uh, ultimately reaches its goal. This is going to be the ultimate conclusion of this whole pada, which is about sadhana and its result. So if you want to get the result, you got to hang in there, do the work, don't be lazy, cut other things out so you have more time and energy, and get it done. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>